Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Samuel with Cedar Pine Designs and in today's video I have this gorgeous nine drawer mid-century dresser. It has some really beautiful wood grain and there's not too much damage on this one and it's actually in really good shape. So I have a really good idea for this one and I hope everybody likes it. So just sit back, relax, and let's jump straight into this one and get our hands dirty. As you may know, I like to start every one of my projects by removing all the drawers and all the handles so that I can assess everything and check to see if there's any damage. I also like to number all the drawers so that they go back into their very specific spots just so that everything closes and opens the way it should. Little surprise, half a Lego guy in there. That's a, There's always a, some little cool things that you find doing this stuff. I have a little box full of little trinkets and stuff like that. Um, I'm using my blower just to get rid of all the bulk of the dust and then I move over to my degreaser so that I can clean the whole piece using diluted TSP and water. So from what I can tell this is one of the more dirtier dusty pieces on the inside at least that I've done in a while. Um, these pieces tend to accumulate a really big amount of dirt and dust on the inside because people don't typically take their drawers out and clean them and that's where I come in and give it a fresh start. I'm sanding everything down, well mostly everything. You'll see later on in the video the plan that I came up with but for the most part there's gonna be a ton of sanding in this video. Um, that's just it is what it is. I'm using 150 grit sandpaper to sand everything down to bare wood. As you can tell there are some surface scratches that come out fairly easy if you just use your sander there and it flattens it out really well just try not to dig into it too deep so you don't create dips in your veneer and blow it out. For this project to strip it down to bare wood I opted to just sand everything with 150 grit sandpaper. I just don't want to scrape it or use a chemical stripper. I feel like this is just a lot safer. Uh, this is a quick little shot of my sandblasting setup. I have a five gallon bucket with the media blast material inside. And for these tight corners right here, typically I would have to sit there and sand it for days and hours just with a small little piece of sandpaper and it really starts to hurt my fingers and if you've been doing this for a while, you may uh, have the same issue. This sandblaster setup is such a godsend and I'm going to be using it a lot more moving forward. So you can see right here that I'm attempting to flip this piece onto its top so that I can remove all the legs and that front skirt because I'm going to sand all of those down to bare wood and it's just a lot easier to do it when they are off the piece and I'm just going to elevate the piece using some uh, dollies so that I can move it around while I'm working on the legs. Fortunately for me, this little skirted piece right here does have a matching piece of veneer on it that is the same as the body. Um, you usually don't find that. Usually um, the skirts and the stretchers on bases will be a solid piece of some sort of different wood and the color doesn't come out right, but for this one, I lucked out. So as I said before in the video that I am sanding almost everything down to bare wood and I'm saving the small little surprise of what I have uh, planned out for this piece that's not going to be a full restoration but it's pretty damn close. So I'm using a red mahogany which is one of my favorite colors to use. Um, I switch between red mahogany, carrington, and a dark walnut but if I want to get that um, classic red hue with these mid-century pieces. I use red mahogany. I do one coat and that almost always seems to be enough. You just wipe it on, wipe it off, and I mean you can go darker or you can add more coats if you want it to be a little bit more red or a little darker, but one coat is usually all I need. So one of the things that I like the most about just restoring a piece, um, for the most part, at least for this one, is that you just have to do a bunch of sanding and after you're done sanding, then it's literally just wipe on, wipe off, and then you do your clear coat. And it's just 
Sometimes paint can be a pain in the butt. You have to sit there and sand paint, sand paint, some dip mess with drips and stuff like that. So sometimes it's nice to just restore a piece. So for the most part, legs usually have the same uh, threaded insert on them, uh, at least for the size. So what I did was I took some scrap uh, like uh, leg stands or post stands that you would normally screw onto the bottom of a dresser and I just screwed them down to a piece of plywood so that way I can screw legs and different types of hardware into these so that I can either paint or stain these and it's pretty convenient. So I know so far it looks like I'm going to be restoring this piece um, in its entirety, but for the middle drawers I did have an idea that I wanted to add a little touch of color. Um, I just thought that these middle drawers, if I did sand them down to bare wood, that those trim pieces that sit in the middle right there weren't going to match completely. And also, I, I feel like it did need just a little bit of color, so I'm patching up any little kind of dings and dents so that way I get a nice smooth finish with my paint and I think that it's going to be a really good idea. So this piece is a commission piece for a client of mine and they kind of gave me free range. They gave me some ideas but their ideas were kind of geared more towards painting half and half like either the body or all the drawers and after seeing the wood grain on this piece um, I kind of uh, took it upon myself to come up with my own idea for it and they were more than confident with me kind of coming up with my own scheme for it so I opted to just do the three middle drawers. Uh, this paint is actually um, a new paint that I'm using and I'm trying to use it more moving forward because it keeps me from having to use a top coat over it. This is a uh, cabinet coat it's made by I think it's called Inselex I get it from Benjamin Moore and it's uh, an acrylic enamel based paint that um, doesn't require polyurethane over top of it it dries really really hard and it's meant for kitchen cabinets and stuff that's going to be used uh, quite often heavy traffic and what's great about this is you only need about I do three coats but they say you can get away with two but this stuff is definitely a game changer um, you don't need primer or anything for it, so it just saves a ton of time. So if anybody's wondering what the color of this paint is, I do drop the color and everything that I use in the description below, but this is called Laurel Woods. It's a Sherwin-Williams color, but Benjamin Moore is more than capable of matching almost any color from any paint brand. And right here I am using Verithane's polyurethane it's water based with a satin finish I decided to use this to finish the dresser because it is going to be used so there's going to be a lot of uh, high traffic areas to this thing plus I tried to look into maybe using a natural oil for this but that stuff takes days to dry and I just don't have the time to let these things sit around to dry because I try to get them out so that I can get new projects in do like about using a water-based polyurethane is that this stuff dries really really fast I mean it cures in a couple of hours it dries in probably uh, on a warm day 20 to 30 minutes so I do about three coats of that with sanding in between each coat with 400 grit sandpaper so that I can get a really nice smooth finish because if you ever notice after the first coat or two it still has kind of a rough feel to it so that 400 grit sandpaper really really helps to get that stuff nice and smooth Now that I'm done spraying that, I'm letting it dry and I'm moving on to the handles. Since the handles aren't anything too unique or special, I decided to paint them rather than restore them because restoring them, I don't think they're solid brass, so they kind of just turned into a weird color. So I'm using a brushed bronze metallic type of color. It has like a little bit of hint of gold in it. So after I'm done doing that, I go ahead and I move on to um, the skirt or the stretcher and I reattach that and that way I can get all the legs reattached so I can stand this thing back up and start to get a really good idea of what it looks like. 
So once the back of those handles are dry, I flip them over so that I can give it a really nice coat of this uh, brushed bronze onto the front. And then I move on to all the drawer slides. I'm using SC Johnson's Paste Wax so that I can uh, rub it all over all the tracks and rails as well as the bottom of all the drawers just so these things will close nice and smoothly because sometimes they could be a little rough. So once I get the stretcher and all the legs reinstalled, I do move on to installing all of these handles back to the drawers. Um, I like the brushed bronze, but I really felt like they were missing something and they were kind of two-toned before I painted them. So what I decided to do was grab some Gilder's Wax in an antique gold color and just kind of give the edge of it um, a light brush with an artist brush. And then I use a microfiber towel to wipe off the excess. Um, you just kind of play with it until you get the look you're going for. And I really do like the contrast. It just kind of makes them pop and stand out just a little bit more than if they would just stay dark. Once I finished getting these handles to my liking, the only thing that there was left to do was to put all these drawers back into the cabinet. And I am super happy with the way that the wax really helps these things glide. And there it is, that green. I really, really like the pop of that green. So let's take a look at how this dresser used to look before, and then we'll see how it used to look after. I have to say that this piece turned out absolutely beautiful. Mid-century is my favorite style of furniture to work on and that little touch of green I feel for me really sets this piece off. So real quick, let's go over the numbers on this piece. This is another commission piece that I have for a client, so I have no initial investment. I did spend $20 on a quart of paint for the green. I spent maybe $20 using my own personal stain, tape, and just a couple of other little things, bringing me to a total of $40, and I did charge $600 to redo this piece, and I made $560 in profit over the course of eight hours, bringing me up to $70 an hour. Just a quick thank you to everybody who made it this far into the video. I really appreciate all the support that I've been getting, and if anybody can, uh, drop a comment um, down below telling me whether you like the green, if you think it was a good choice, or if there was something you would have done different with this piece. Thank you again, and I can't wait to see you on the next project.